Hi there, this is Ranjit and I have the LG V30 Plus with me and I've been testing this device for the last seven days with my primary SIM. And in this uh, review, I'll share my experience. I'll divide uh, the review between pros and cons, what I liked about this device and what are the things that I did not like about this device. And uh, I was actually not going to review this LG V30 because I thought LG as usual will overprice it in India but they launched this uh, V30 Plus at just rupees 45,000. And this is the premium version of the LG V30. That's the plus variant that comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. And overall, I would say considering the price point, it is a very well-balanced flagship smartphone. Uh, but uh, let's divide this review between the pros and cons. Uh, but before that, here are the specs for the LG V30 Plus. As you can see, it is powered by the Snapdragon 835 chipset. It has a six inch OLED screen and it has four gig gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. It comes with a dual camera setup with a wide angle lens and other specs are on the screen for your reference. So now let's move to the pros and cons. First let's talk about the pros what I liked about this device. And the first thing that I immediately liked about this device and I've tested every other flagship Android phone for example there's the Pixel 2 XL, I have the Note, I have even used the iPhone 8. This has to be the lightest flagship Android phone that I've used. Even though it's having that six inch uh, uh, POLED screen, this is very light to hold and the lightest among the bunch. In fact, when I reviewed the Note 8, I felt it was top heavy. We don't have any problems like this. And this is sort of important. Many people don't expect that. If you take a lot of calls, very long calls, you will appreciate that. I've taken long calls with this device over about 50 minutes and uh, due to the weight uh, I it didn't feel that it was fatiguing me so the weight balance is done excellent on this phone and you'll immediately notice uh, that also again it's a flagship smartphone and it feels premium but again like other flagships also like the note 8 etc it's going with the glass back design on the back uh, and obviously the front is glass uh, it's gorilla glass 5 but again as it's glass so you got to be a little bit careful and because that's uh, it's a glass thing it's slightly on the slippery side i've already ordered a case i'll be getting that sadly you don't get any case or anything bundled in the box again for more info check out the unboxing video i have posted that video earlier link for that will be there in the show notes now moving to another thing that i really liked about this device is the cellular uh, call quality reception i have to say is amazing on this one as you can see in this office this is a soundproof room and almost uh, with airtel that's my primary sim i hardly get any signal with almost any other uh, smartphone i just get one single bar in this room because it's soundproof so reception is low and with many of the other phones of uh, even flagship even with the pixel 2 xl uh, often uh, calls get disconnected within a minute or two in this room but with this lg uh, v30 plus i could take long calls even in this room yes it got disconnected once or twice but not as frequently as other flagship smartphones i've used so in terms of cellular call, uh, reception it's also good and now moving to cellular call quality that was also very good uh, the earpiece is loud and clear and i didn't have problems with that so in cellular reception lg has done a very good job now moving to the screen quality i was actually pretty skeptical about this uh, if you have seen my review of uh, the pixel 2 xl and also in my top five smartphones the pixel 2 lost because of the screen display and uh, actually uh, the screen on the pixel uh, 2 xl is actually made by lg itself and it's a similar POLED screen uh, that they're using but for some reason i don't know if uh, the quality control has improved or whatnot because i've been using this pixel 2 xl for the last two months this i just got last week i purchased it from amazon and the screen quality is significantly better on uh, this one even in terms of viewing angles this is a lot better than the pixel 2 xl with this even if i share uh, twisted it this much I used to get that bluish tint that is not uh, that much on this i won't say the display is perfect if at a particular angle like this if i tilt too much yes there is that blue tint but again uh, in terms of display actually the display quality is good i have no problems the color calibration is done a lot better and again we also have a lot of modes in the settings where you can tweak down your color so in terms of display i was very worried how would be the display luckily the display is good on this one 
Now moving to the battery, it has a 3300 milliamp hour uh, battery and is powered by the familiar Snapdragon 835 chipset which is powering almost in every other flagship Android phone. And in terms of battery life also, uh, the battery life was good and in fact it is having a quad HD display. This is not a full HD display, it's a quad HD display and I did not scale it down to what you say full HD like uh, for example Samsung Galaxy S8 etc come with the default setting of uh, full HD. I'm using this on uh, quad hd and even uh, with that setting i'm getting actually very good battery life on this one uh, i would say in terms of screen on time anywhere between five to five and a half hours of screen time I'm, I'm getting and also the standby time is actually really good uh, with regular usage at the end of the day um, almost every time between 25 to 30 percent one day i just forgot to charge it and as you can see from the graphs this is almost about uh, one and a half days of the charge then also i was able to use the phone so the battery life is actually good and also uh, the standby drain is actually really less and this is the battery life that i'm getting with this always on display mode so if i disable this always on display mode i might get a slightly better battery life so in terms of battery life also it's good uh, compared to other flagship android phones that you get some of you have asked me to compare it with the oneplus 5t and i would say the battery life is very similar that i was getting on the oneplus uh, 5t but again the oneplus 5t is not a quad hd display and it also does not have this always on uh, display now moving to uh, the always on uh, display Display. As you can see, we have this always on display, display time and other icons for notification, etc. We have similar functionality with the Note 8 and even with the Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL, so nothing new. But I like that uh, it does offer you some functionality. For example, if you just swipe like this, you get to the quick toggles, uh, their settings. And if you're playing any music or something, you get the controls here directly. So I like the small customizations that have been done on this phone. Also, uh, it is a flagship Android phone, so it is specced up and uh, the fingerprint scanner is here at the back on this one so it's easily you can reach it and of course it's very responsive but again the power button is also embedded into this so yeah that's one thing that you have to get used to it but you don't have to use the power button all the time to actually uh, what do you say lock the phone because it has uh, what do you say double tap to lock like this almost every other lg phone has that so this feature is there also on uh, this phone uh, so but again the power button is on the back so it might take a little bit time to get used to it but in terms of responsiveness it's very responsive and some of you have asked me uh, this one also has the face unlocking feature and this is actually not new guys on android almost uh, last couple of years uh, most of the android phones have that feature this one also has that feature but i like that if you just pick it up it senses and unlocks so i don't have to press any key uh, this is a hidden feature this is not enabled by default as you can see it's on rest i just pick up the phone it senses that takes a second and does the face unlock so you don't have to touch any button just pick it up wait for a second and it unlocks uh, i'm just used to this because i was using the iphone 10 earlier but yeah face unlocking feature is also there uh, but yeah i'm glad to see that they didn't omit the fingerprint scanner now moving to the general performance, uh, uh, this one is powered by the Snapdragon 835 chipset. So general performance is actually really good. And it, though it comes with just four gigabytes of uh, RAM, surprisingly the performance was actually very good. I did not face any lag whatsoever uh, when I'm using this phone and it handled everything I threw on it without any issues. So in terms of general performance, it's very good. But again, I don't like the UI that is provided on this. It feels a little bit cartoony, especially in the settings, uh, uh, some of the settings things are about two or three layers deep so LG can definitely uh, work on the UI in fact I simply didn't like the UI on this and I'm using a custom launcher on this actually I'm using the Microsoft launcher I already made a video about that a link for that will be there in the YouTube description so after changing the default launcher and the default keyboard the default keyboard is also terrible on this with almost no auto correct uh, so I changed it to Swift keys and I'm using the Microsoft launcher and after that uh, it's been a good experience now moving to gaming again it's a snapdragon 835 chipset so it handled all the games i threw on it without any issues again with extended gaming the battery tends to fall a lot quicker uh, so that is one thing that i've noticed uh, 
Now moving to the camera, uh, the camera setup is very interesting on this one. As you can see, it has that dual camera setup. One is a regular camera, that's a 16 megapixel, and other one is a wide angle camera. Uh, so uh, the regular camera actually uh, also has optical image stabilization. And I'll show you some samples. I took some video also, it stabilizes it very well. Uh, but uh, LG has gone with something different compared to all. For example, other competitors with the dual camera setup are going for the telephoto lens. Uh, this is going exactly opposite with the wide angle lens. And as you can see with the sample shots, it provides a very interesting perspective, I would say. Uh, so I really like the wide angle camera on this one. And in fact, the performance of the camera was actually good. It was not bad. The camera performance is good. As you can see from the sample shots, I've taken these sample shots when I was in Hyderabad roaming here and there. And surprisingly, the camera performance is good. Uh, it does not have a dedicated, what do you say, portrait mode. So that is actually missing on this one. Uh, but if you take uh, the pictures of close up objects, because because the main uh, camera is a uh, f 1.6 aperture you get that beautiful uh, background blur even with this one but again if you are expecting portrait mode that is simply not there on this one overall i would say the camera performance has been good as you can see with the sample shots but in a low lighting uh, i would say if i pick up the pixel 2 xl yes the pixel 2 xl will take slightly better pictures than this but it's not to say that this one is bad now moving to the front facing cam it just has a 5 megapixel uh, front facing camera and i would say uh, the camera uh, from the front facing camera is just average compared to other flagship it's not bad as i can see from the sample shots but again if i pick up the note 8 or the pixel 2 xl or even the oneplus 5t all of these have a far better front facing camera uh, so that was regarding the camera i also took some videos with this one so here are the samples uh, with the video wanted to give you a very quick idea regarding the front facing camera performance if you use it like vlogging etc as you can see this is in outdoor conditions and uh, it also has a, a wide vision right now it's in the wide vision option i'll just move it to the regular one uh, this is the regular one i feel it's a lot closer with the regular one uh, but this is the wide one and the audio is also being recorded via its internal microphone So you guys let me know what do you think about the video recording on this LG V30 plus with its uh, front-facing camera This sample video video is in uh, 4k and this is in wide vision even uh, in the video you can change the wide vision and This is the regular vision as you can see and this is in 4k So what I'll do is I'll just walk a little bit to see if uh, it does uh, any decent stabilization and as you can see i'm walking and again this is the regular mode and the beauty is that you can switch the modes on the fly between this wide vision and the regular mode even in video up to 4k Apart from that, we also get a wireless charging with this uh, device and it is also IP68 certified. That means it is dust and water resistant. Even if you dip the phone completely in water, nothing will happen. And also it supports fast charging. Now moving to one thing that I really liked on this phone and if you listen to a lot of music via headphones, you love this, is the audio that you get from the headphone jack. It has a dedicated DAC on this that they call it the hi-fi DAC and it really makes a difference if you have high quality headphones for example if you are have heavy headphones that are over 50 ohms actually uh, this will really shine and you can notice the difference in fact LG says that it can support headphones up to 600 ohms I don't have any headphones up to 600 uh, ohms but I did have some high quality headphones and I listened to the music uh, with this one and it's a delight I would say so if you listen to a lot of music via the headphone jack you'll really appreciate that and also LG has provided some audio tweaks when you enable that uh, hi-fi DAC mode so you can actually change the sound signature a little bit some of you have also asked me to test it with bluetooth uh, for example i have these are the airpods and i did test them with airpods and even uh, uh, with the bluetooth uh, headsets like airpods etc the sound quality was very good no issues actually it supports bluetooth 5 and the range also i thought that i got with bluetooth was actually excellent also one more minor thing that i've noticed is that uh it also has a built-in audio recording app and the quality of audio that i got uh, while recording was again excellent so in fact 
if you are a person like me who works in video and stuff you can use uh, this one as an external recorder for just voice recording also moving to video uh, again if you are in the to, to video in terms of video recording the manual modes that are offered on this one are next to none so in fact you can use this as a dedicated video recorder if you record youtube videos and stuff the amount of manual controls that they have given is amazing so these were the good things that i liked about the lg v30 now let's move to the cons these are the things that annoyed me on this device and the first thing is regarding the front facing camera this has to be the weakest as i mentioned compared to other flagship if you are selfie upstairs don't get me wrong it's not like the front camera is bad and terrible you've seen the sample shots but when i compare it with the pixel 2 xl or the note 8 or even the oneplus 5t all of them have a better front facing camera so in that department lg didn't do a great job in my opinion now moving to another thing that might annoy a lot of people uh, in 2017 this portrait mode was the big rage but with this lg v30 we simply do not get that mode we get that wide angle mode but that portrait mode is simply missing so if you absolutely need that that is simply not there on this device now another uh, quibble that i have is LG is projecting this phone as a multimedia centric phone, great audio for uh, and everything. But the speaker on this one is simply not that great. It has a single speaker here. In terms of loudness, it's fine. The ringtones, etc. are fine. I never missed a call or whatever. But in terms of quality of sound that comes from this is super flat and uninspiring. So I would say, again, in terms of speaker, this has to uh, have the worst speakers among the flagships. I don't, I don't get it. These minor things, LG just didn't uh, pay too much attention. And now coming to the user interface, as I mentioned earlier also, the default user interface on this is just not that great. It is very cartoony and you have to go down deep into layers and layers to adjust things. So LG really needs to revamp the UI. And in fact, I didn't like the default UI. So I installed the Microsoft launcher on it. That's a third party launcher. And thankfully, even with third party launchers, I did not notice any lag whatsoever on this device. But again, uh, UI is a personal uh, preference. According to me, I frankly did not like the default UI. So these were the cons of this LG V30. But still, considering the price point in India at rupees 45,000, I feel this is one of the best balanced, what do you say, Android uh, flagship smartphone that we currently have in India. For the price of 45,000, you are getting a lot with this device. But again, you guys let me know what do you feel about the LG V30 Plus. I feel LG India has been doing a shitty job about marketing this device. And also, I uh, frankly feel they launched this device too late in the market. But again, guys, you guys let me know what do you think about the LG V30 Plus. And if you found this uh, video review helpful, uh, I'll appreciate if you can click the like button and if you're still not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video